Hello and welcome to This Week in Campbell Football. I'm Chris Amire along with head coach of the Fighting Camels, Mike Mentor. And as always, we're powered by our friends at Don Benson Ford. Coach, some great things to talk about today. You go down to the sunshine state of Florida, come back with a road victory over Stetson. Well, it was a, a hard fought first half. And, and um, I, I, you know, we, we came out there offensively, kind of shot ourselves in the foot. We was moving the football early on. and and um, had some mix, miscues um, in the red zone that I thought we could have took advantage of. And then right before the half was over, snapped the ball um, over the head of the quarterback. And, and um, really, really wasn't great football, I didn't think, from an offensive standpoint. Um, I thought um, that um, we did a great job defensively. Um, because they, they, they had some big plays that kind of got them into the red zone area, and they was 0 for 3. And so I think that was really, really big as far as scoring touchdowns. I call it 0 for 3. Um, that was really big for us um, as a football team. And so we was really lucky um, to be down 6 to 3 at halftime. And, and, um, and really my halftime speech to the guys, I said, look, man, football is a real simple sport. It's about making plays. It's not about anything else. It's not about being in position. It's not about almost being there. It's about taking care of the play and making it. That's what it's about. And, and um, so I, I didn't yell or scream. I just said it real, real soft and, and walked out. And, and um, they responded because that third quarter, we came out making some plays. And, and um, you know, it started with, with, with our defense out there making plays, making them give the ball up to the offense. Our offense come right down, get a touchdown. Um, I thought that was big. Um, we had some miscommunication on the extra point, um, which we can't have. And, and so the guys wasn't set. We, 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 we hiked the ball before they were set, and then that's why they was able to get penetration in there and knock that extra point down, which um, you know gave them opportunity now of a two-point uh, two score game of after we scored this next touchdown, um, 10 points opposed to 11. And so um, that, that, that made it tough um, from, from that standpoint. But then the defense came up again, made some big plays, and I don't know if that's when Chris got the interception or not, but um, it, it was, it was a, again, a big play by them and gave us the ball back. And, and, um, and then offensively, we went right back to the air and, and great throw and catch by um, Cam to you know to Damon Simmons and and um, he was it was contested um, way way to go up and snatch the ball away from his body and and then stiff arm the kid to be able to then um, to run the rest of the way so 72 yard um, you know throwing catch uh, which is what we need in our offense we needed some big plays and we was able to get it in that second half in in, in our passing game because they had so many people in the box trying to stop um, our running game and so. Um, I, I thought offensively, um, the offensive coaches made the right adjustments um, to it. Now I challenged my defense. I said, look, we can't give up any more points. Six points is enough. Uh, we can't give up any more points in the second half. And, and that's what they did. They responded with that and, and really played competitive football. Um, they were, the DBs was, was attacking the football opposed to just being there. They did what I talked about at halftime. They was knocking the ball down intercepting the ball um, and then of course our defensive line um, was going to put pressure on them and do what they do and um, I thought our linebackers played really good um, they did you know three sacks um, I, that's probably the most and and since I've been here that linebackers have got that many sacks and so I thought they they, they uh, executed the game playing very very well and, um, and so you know with that um, I, I thought the second half was the type of football that we can play and um, so I was, I was proud that, that these guys woke up and, and finished the game and, and played really good in that second half. So, you know, with that said, um, you know, it's a, it's a great road win. But like I told you last week, it was not about this week. It was about what do you do, how do you respond after having a great week. One more thing about that game, Coach. A lot of heroes in that game, especially in the second half. But Austin Fleming, uh, he was an all-state state championship game MVP in high school. He came in as a quarterback. You had to basically convince him to play tight end for you uh, last year. That turned out to be fantastic. But now you're running him out of the Wildcat. He was your leading rusher. He was your leading receiver in that game. Pretty good for a backup quarterback. i tell you what, man. Uh, Fleming, we, we just now starting to discover 
how many talents this young man really have. And, and um, he, he really took over that game uh, from a tight end um, perspective. When, when we had to have big time catches in, in tight situations, guess what? It was Fleming who was making those catches. And, and, and if you can control the middle of the field, man, it makes it very, very difficult on a, on a defense. And, and that's what we went to is, is um, trying to control the middle of the field with him. And, and so he did a great job of, of really um, not only catching the football, but also running the football in the Wildcat, but also blocking. So a lot of people didn't get to see that part because he didn't have the ball in his hand. But he um, had a lot of great blocks in the run game um, when Deshaun was running the football and Jordan was running the football. So um, Austin Fleming just had a, a, a great game all the way around and, and, and I think give us another weapon um, that we need on, on offense. Here's more on Austin Fleming. Austin Fleming came to Campbell as a quarterback. He then found success as a pass-catching tight end. This season, he is back behind center, helping his offense run the Wildcat. Well, he's, a, he's a quarterback, you know, and, and uh, that's what he did in high school. And so he won a whole lot of plays um, running the ball in high school. So, you know what, let's use some of that. And, and um, it looks like he's down for one. Oh, he's down for Oh, no, no, he's gone, you know. So um, I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on defenses um, with Austin Fleming being able to run the Wildcat like that. It's one of those things that uh, when I came to Campbell, I came here to win, um, and I came here to play for Coach Minner, and, and for them to put me a quarterback and then tight end, I just want to do whatever it takes to win. And, and if that's put me a quarterback and run me, then I'll, I'll do that. If it's catching, I'll run. I'll catch it, and if it's throwing, then I'll throw it. I mean, whatever, whatever it takes to win, I'll do anything for this team. Coach, it's that point of the season. It's hard to believe. Campbell just has four more games remaining on their schedule. Two more home games, and one of those comes up this weekend. It's homecoming Saturday, 4 p.m., as you guys take on a Moorhead State team that's the best scoring team in the conference. Well, they're the best offense that we've faced all year, and so we got to be ready to go. Um, these guys spread the ball around. Um, they, they, they know who they are. And when you know who you are and you execute who you are, man, it's very difficult to stop. And they got some great wide receivers in all positions. Um, and, and the quarterback is very savvy. They've been there a long time, know the system, know where he wants to go with the football. Um, defenses, it doesn't matter what you're in. They got an answer for it. And, um, and so really, it's, it, this game is going to come down to me against you and can I stop you. That's what it's going to come down to. No scheme going to stop these guys, none of that. Um, it's going to become man against man and who makes the plays and who don't. That's what this game is. And, and um, so I'm, I'm excited uh, for, for the defense to get this, you know, this challenge to, to go against them. And, and then from you know, our offensive perspective, um, their defense is good. Um, you know, they don't get a lot of credit because their offense is doing so well. Um, but this defense, man, they, they, they don't give up a lot of points either. And so um, it, it's going to be a interesting. I mean, the team we got beat by Butler, they, you know, they, they beat them pretty handily. And, um, and so um, it's going to be a big challenge. Um, but, but this is why we're in the business, man. We're in the business for challenges like this. And, and uh, man, I, I'm looking forward to it. And um, that coach has done a great job of really just building that program the way um, that he wants to. And so um, it's, it's going to be an exciting time, man. You, you don't want to miss this one. Going to be fun. Not that you need a reason to come back uh, to Campbell for homecoming, but the best offense in the conference against Campbell, the best defense in the conference, and the top five in all of FCS for most of the year, Campbell's defense. It'll be fun. We'd love to see you out here a special start time, 4 o'clock this Saturday for the homecoming game. If you can't make it, we'll be on the air live on the Campbell Digital Network at 3.30 with free video coverage. Fort Head Coach Mike Minner, I'm Chris Amar saying so long, and we'll see you next week on This Week in Campbell Football.